basically you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street so you are a robber i know that you have robbed your ex's heart but yeah uh, like you have to now rob the houses now each house has a certain amount of money that is stashed and the only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is adjacent houses have security system connected and automatically like contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into the same night so we just want one thing that we cannot rob two adjacent houses that's it else we can do anything whatsoever now we are given an integer nums representing the amount of money stashed into each house is written the maximum amount of money so basically we have nums array which is saying okay we have four houses one two three four and all four houses have this this amount of money stashed into them we have these as five houses and for every house i have such amount of money stashed into them so now the obvious thing is okay if i am standing if a robber is standing at any again for this kind of questions when you have actually again if you are actually familiar with the reading questions then just put down like don't start dry running in the very beginning just put down at a point okay let's imagine i am a robber and i am at the specific ith house so i will have two options thinking i will have two options either i will rob this house or i will not rob this house so firstly when you heard of this i have two options at an index the first thing which should have come in your mind is okay i can indirectly go and try this via recursion and for sure two options do don't do take not take rob not rob then for sure i can also apply dp now with this fact i i i know okay i have two options rob this house or don't rob this house so i know okay i can simply try all the possibilities using recursion and then i can also memorize that but what is that take not take at as in like what is that rob don't rob so if i rob this house so i will get this amount which is the money stashed into that house so i'll get nums of i as the amount but there's a constraint that if i rob this house i cannot rob the previous house so what is the maximum amount of money i could have got if i would have robbed up till the point of i minus 2 because this is i minus 1 so for sure this will be i minus 2 so i will ask what's the maximum amount of money i could have got if i would have robbed up till the i minus 2 and then what if i don't plan to rob this house okay if i don't plan to rob this house altogether then for sure i can easily go and ask what's the maximum amount of money would i could have got up till the i minus one because i don't plan to rob this current house so for sure i can start my robbing from the previous house itself this house itself i can start my robbing and if i plan to rob this house then for sure i cannot i cannot choose to rob any way whatsoever the previous house so i'll start the planning of robbing from the previous to previous house which is the i minus 2 and thus you will see that if i plan to rob the house i'll start from the i minus 2 if i don't plan to rob this house i'll start off from the i minus 1 and this is the only condition in the entire problem that my answer will be and again i want the maximum amount of money i could rob so what i could do is okay my answer will be maximum of if i plan or if i plan to rob the ith house and like what if i don't plan to rob the ith house this will give me the maximum value and again in a simple recursion you just simply apply this recursion and in a recursion you have a base case base case depends upon if you are starting your robbing like because recursion is like you just pass in the recursive function and then you will pass in the specific i now if you pass this i as let's say n minus 1 because for sure either you will pass in as n minus 1 or you will pass in as a 0 so if you pass in as the n minus 1 then the base case will be if i is less than 0 return a 0 if you pass in a 0 then the base case will be if i is greater than equals to n then return a 0 but depending upon okay if the base case is this then you will actually have to modify it and do a i plus 2 and i plus 1 like this so that is because you will actually be propagating forward cool now 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 okay that is a simple base case to just incorporate a dp or basically to just memoize that and how to memoize because we know it's a take not take a zero one knapsack kind of a problem so you will just simply do a simple addition of one aligner that okay if dp of index is not to the minus one just simply return that dp it's a simple dp check and also memoize while returning the answer and this is the only simple code which you could have written so here you saw that i initialized my global dp I initialize that dp with the size of n plus 1 although n is also good because we are not going on to new indexes so n is also good but yeah 
for safety i usually by default without even reading just initialize with, uh, plus one but it's n is also good now i just as you said i started off my robbery from the last index that's that's the reason my base is my base my base index or basically my base value is base condition is if i is less than zero then i'll simply return a zero now uh, this is a simple memo check this is a simple memo assign and the main condition is if answer is answers is simply maximum of if i plan to rob the ith house or or if i don't plan to rob the ith house that is the simple check which we could have and ultimately we can get the answer and as you can see it's a simple memoization so i'll for sure go on to all of my indexes only once because of this so for sure my time is o of n and i had to make a dp of n r of size n so my space is also o of n can we improvise this now as soon as the improvisation picture comes in in dp we have to convert that to bottom up so we'll just simply convert this exact relation to the bottom up relation exactly same we'll do nothing else here i will simply write dp of i minus 2 here i write dp of i minus 1 and that's it so for that now base condition will always be there that base condition you will have to make for bottom up you will have to make a base condition so how will be a base condition now base condition will be if I have, see, you remembered, okay, if I am at the ith index, I am planning to go on to dp of i minus 2. And I'm also, if I don't take it, then I plan to go to dp of i minus 1. So for sure, I should be having starting two values. Starting two dp values I should have. Then I can start off my values from i equal to 2. I can start off from i equal to 2. For i equal to 0 and i equal to 1, I need to have my dp values. So I'll just say, okay, if I only have one house, so for sure i will just steal that house so okay if i equal to zero then my dp of i is nothing but my nums of i which is the dp of zero is nothing but my nums of zero that's it but 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 if i have two houses zero and one zero and one then i want to know dp of one so again i have two options either i can steal this house dp of one then my answer can be my nums of one or i can skip to steal this house which means okay i'll just skip it so my previous value whatsoever is there is actually nums of zero then okay it's nums of zero and again i wanted maximum amount of money so i'll take the maximum so this can be a dp of one so it is a simple base case which we can have okay dp of zero is nums of zero and dp of one is maximum of nums of one and nums of zero and after this having a base condition we can simply start off our dp with saying that dp of i is nothing but maximum of dp of i minus two plus nums of i or my dp of i minus one and this is the exact same condition which we saw in recursion also exact same condition so but it's just the difference that we have to make the base condition by ourselves so we just look at the code it's exactly same that we initialized our dp again we don't need to put it as a n, n plus one we can also just do it by size n and here i said okay if d, my dp of zero will be nums of zero i just added okay if n is one itself which means i only have one house then simply return my dp of zero or simply return my nums of zero so i'll simply return that but if not, then I will also have to put other base condition, which is dp of 1. So I'll just go and check, okay, dp of 1 will be maximum of nums of 0 and nums of 1. And then I can start off my iteration from i equal to up to less than n. My nums of i, which means sorry, my dp of i will actually become maximum of nums of i plus dp of i, I minus 2, exact same condition. Or dp of i minus 1, dp of i minus 1. And whosoever is maximum, just get that and put it in my dp of i and simply return the dp of n minus 1 because ultimately we are going in from the left right 2 to up to n so n will actually be storing the maximum amount of money i could have stashed if i end at the n minus 1th house now again the question was optimization did we optimize no still we are using o of n time and o of n space what the hell we did by by spending our time just modifying the code although the modification was a bit less but yes still we modified the code it's like how is it useful you will see that in this to, to actually find the value of to actually find the value of dp of i you're only using dp of i minus 2 and i minus 1 so in total like we just need three variables instead of the entire array i could just use three variables let's say current let's say previous two let's say previous one and that's it so i can just say that okay my dp of zero is in the beginning previous two right it is previous two 
इट इज प्रीवियस वन सो आई कैन जस्ट डू वन थिंग ओके राधर देन माई डीबी आई कैन जस्ट टेक अ वेरिएबल जस्ट अ वेरिएबल इन टीजर प्रीवियस टू हेयर इज हेयर इट इन टीजर प्रीवियस वन एंड this will actually become my dpfi let's let's like name it as a current so my current will become maximum of nums of i plus previous to comma or like this plus value comma previous one and simply after this is assigned just to say that okay your previous to will actually become a previous one and previous one will become a current with this you are simply assigning your three variables because you know you will only be using these three variables to find the answer so as you can see i just did a small modification of using three variables that said i removed the entire array this is gone i just used previous two and previous one the above modification i showed that is here i assigned i used a current and then i assigned for the next iteration i assigned my previous two and pre uh, previous one correct values which means as you can see here it is previous two here it is previous one here it is current for the next iteration here it should be previous two here it should be previous one and it should be current so basically you can see my current i my sorry my my previous one i assigned to previous two so you can see my previous one is assigned to previous two and my current i assigned to previous one i can assign to my previous one and this is a current value and that's how i can simply by using three variables i can reduce the space time will still be taking over n because i have to go on to all the houses all the indexes so time is still o of n but yes space is reduced to o of 1 and that's how i can simply get this solved i hope you got it see you right goodbye take care